हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अभिपीडिया पावर्ड बाय अभिमन्यु आईएएस दिस इज 22nd लेक्चर ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक वैल्यू एडिशन सीरीज विद डॉक्टर विवेक राणा एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग टॉपिक्स व्हिच आर रिलेवेंट फ्रॉम यूपीएससी प्रीलिम्स 2020 पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो टॉपिक फॉर टुडेस लेक्चर इज फ्रॉम बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सेक्शन वी हैव सीन इन लास्ट ईयर एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल लॉट ऑफ क्वेश्चंस हैव अपीयर्ड इन बायोटेक सेक्शन सो आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग golden rice no golden rice even though is a conventional topic which we had covered in our class lectures as well but still the users who have been associated with abipedia of late it will be a total a novel topic and it's this theme is in news so i'll be discussing why suddenly golden rice is once again in news what are the controversies what are the advantages this uh, uh, golden rice perceives upon humanity and what are the additional themes which are likely to be covered if examiner tends to ask such uh, uh, from this topic and finally a practice question to brush your knowledge and revive your facts so without wasting any time let's start what this golden rice is all about as you could see in the last slide that the color of the rice is quite different from the conventional rice we consume on daily basis so this is the reason why the term golden rice is used because the hue of the crop is of golden the grains which you are obtaining and this is what the nomenclature the first theme of the lecture is it the color appears due to its golden yellowish hue is known as golden rice coming to development part the the project uh, had genesis in rockefeller institution within 1880s and 90s had started work on this project but eventually it, there were two scientists there was a uh, potrivers as well as the peter bayer these two scientists which were working for sweden and german university dedicated their lives for developing this ambitious project because they were appalled by you know, the poverty as well as of uh, the nutritional deficiency of the developing world and they wanted to help uh, the developing world by developing this particular crop so it took them almost a decade they started in 1990s and eventually by 1999 they had this crop developed so this is uh, was a landmark crop because it was a food crop which was fortified with the additional nutrient and that's what the advantages of this crop is so this golden rice like all other gm crop has one additional advantage over the conventional rice or rice or sativa which we call them they had fortified it with beta carotene now beta carotene is when you consume as a individual it metabolizes into vitamin a so ultimately vitamin a deficiency disorders were the main angle for which this miracle crop was being developed and it gave lot of hope to millions of population but then before this potential could be realized there was a cartagena protocol in 2000 and there was lot of ngos who were criticizing that human beings acting as a god or playing with the nat nature without the consent so there was lot of controversies so this decade was made with lot of controversies and such projects couldn't realize their full potential even today when we ask the peter bayer he says that if you were known because lot of hardship goes into making such projects almost a decade He, they had spent on this project and eventually the, the when they developed this outcome they wanted to transform lives but event but it couldn't be realized because of the negative criticism so greenpeace international was the one of the main organization which had criticized it's almost opposing all gm crops that's the reason it till date no developing country has given a green signal for commercial plantation of these golden rice in india also if we discuss in 2002 geac had approved bt cotton which was the last crop which got approval for commercial planting and eventually environment and agriculture ministry also agreed for cultivation uh, yes bt brinjal and dmh mustard have been uh, granted a uh, green signal by geac but still the final review uh, is pending before the the ministry of agriculture and environment so we have to understand that journey of gm developing gm crop is another thing cultivating and commercial planting is another thing so this is the reason because there is a growing uh, movement for organic food movement and lot of countries 
do not approve of GM crops yet. There is a lot of suspicion regarding health concerns or allergic reactions. And also the additional controversy is that why you have to change the natural crop, it's better to give the additional supplement. There are other means by which food can be fortified or it can be used. GM is not the only thing which you should be relying on. So this debate is this raging debate which continues even in this year 2020 and 19. Uh, Maharashtra farmers from Akola district as well as in Haryana, there were GM Satyagraha kind of civil disobedience movements took place to create awareness about farmers plight because they are now going ahead with HD cotton and BT brinjal by procuring them illegally from Bangladesh. So coming back to topic, golden rice is once again has been approved only in US Canada which are not party to Cartagena protocol. Majority of the world still looks it as a suspicion that there can be monopolizing tendency and no one wants to play with the world food market still. Now why it is currently in news in 2020? Because finally one country has taken a bold decision. Their regulator has given a green signal for cultivation and the field trials according to them have been safe and there are no such unwarranted controversies which are highlighted. So Philippines is the uh, reason which we are covering golden rice for this time. Their regulator has given go ahead to the cultivation of Philip uh, for the plantation but yes the final step is once again the commercial who is going to produce that commercially that's another hurdle which it has to met but once the regulatory hurdle is clear the commercial eventually falls in place so finally there is a one developing country which has given green signal to the golden rice so this is what why golden rice is in news now what are the additional themes which you should cover from GM cross perspective or from this topic? First of all, all GM cross which have been in news in last two or three years, you should give a quick overview of the characteristic feature which they have in it. Because at times uh, two or three crops are given as a incorrectly matched pair or match the following type of questions are asked and you have to just decode the exact thing. For instance, when I say BT Bringer, or BT cotton. This series follows for pest resistance theme. There is a bollworm pest which causes large scale destruction. So we have to develop uh, the, this GM crop for getting uh, the additional advantage of pest resistance. You don't have to sp uh, spray pesticides which are detrimental to environment. Nevertheless, there is an inbuilt resistance against these pests. Or for uh, another example, could be GM tomato. Which uh, whose uh, shelf life got increased by this uh, technology. So you have to just give an overview of GM potato, GM tomato, DMH11, the GM mustard which is currently uh, facing the trials and tribunals for getting released in India. So just have an overview of all GM crops. Then coming to the second angle, we should also be familiar uh, with the basics of biotechnology which are used in producing such crops. So make sure you also go through the genetic engineering, gene therapy, gene editing, gene sequencing because all these topics are likely to be confusing one once the examiner tries to get the a tricky question out of its bag. And from the summit's point of view, Cartagena protocol because it deals with living modified organisms because there is uh, acceptable uh, uh, debate which says that once you start cultivating the GM crops, there is a threat to local biodiversity because whenever any farmer will cultivate such crops, he will get better return, better yield and eventually the whole district and villages tend to shift to such crops. And the traditional varieties which cannot uh, withstand the onslaught of this technology tends to lose them. So this was one of the major reasons why BT Brinjal was also not approved in India. Because once BT Brinjal would have been approved, almost 60 local varieties would have faced a challenge and may, might not have been able to keep in long run. So this Cartagena protocol prevents or creates awareness about some living modified organisms. So you should widely brush it up. And also role of GEAC because it, it's the main regulatory body in India which reviews GM crops for cultivation. Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. It's working under Ministry of Environment and this is one of the themes which was asked in one of the UPSC previous year question as well. We have tried to confuse with the ministries involved in the uh, 
with work uh, of the GEAC. So currently the promotion of GM crop rests with Department of Biotechnology but approval has been given to GEAC so that it reviews whether this crop is environmentally safe for introduction or it's likely to be counterproductive. So make sure the basic integrities of these associated topics are also covered by you. Now finally, uh, practice question uh, and once again I have just uh, framed a basic question and if you are hearing the lecture carefully, you will be easily in position to answer. You have to pick the incorrectly matched pair and some popular GM crops have been listed which you all are currently aware of. So golden rice we all know has a vitamin A content, so vitamin A deficiency is another theme which you should prepare. Just as I highlighted in last slide as well, you should go through all vitamins because generally they tend to confuse you with the another vitamin details. What are deficiency disorder? What are the ideal sources for vitamin A? Like cod liver oil is considered as the best source of vitamin A. Also green leafy vegetables like spinach. Okay, so this is what golden rice is. Then Bt cotton, as I have discussed, mainly deals with pest resistance. There is a bollworm pest, pink bollworm to be specific, which used to damage a lot of cotton. And all the regions which have switched to Bt cotton have achieved landmark productions. Yes, there is a plateau phase currently, but still uh, in last decade, this crop has been a wonder crop and fiber production has help uh, all the target which have been set have been met by the BP cotton. Then eventually DMH11 or GM mustard is promising higher yield than Varun variety. So you should be aware of this currently is one of the crop which has been developed by India itself because generally a uh, lot of times these GM crops have been developed by Monsanto or some other MNCs and there is a suspicion that they may monopolize our food market with the risk of uh, inflating prices or being dependent on them. Finally, the research was by Delhi University team led, led by Deepak Panter. So, a lot of hopes are there from research scientists that their crop should get approved for finally cultivation. And initial trials have uh, been successful and they what they have promised is being delivered almost 30 to 35 percent higher yield than the conventional variety. So finally, the last option is the wrong one, the D, B, T, Bringer. Make sure you are not getting confused with the word B because I have written vitamin B complex. This B, T stands for a bacteria from which this GM crop has been prepared because we have covered in our class lecture as well. This B, T is Bacillus thuringiensis. Now, this is a name of a bacteria from which a specific gene is isolated, described uh, 1A, B, 2, B, C, some specific genes are incorporated which provides inborn resistance against these pests like the bollworm. So whether it's Bt corn, whether it's Bt brinjal or whether it is Bt cotton, the theme remains the same, pest resistance. Yes, the uh, pests at times are different like it was bollworm in cotton, in brinjal it is leaf and shoot bollworm. So even if you do not do not know the specific, uh, pest resistance is more than good enough option for solving GS questions. So this is what I had for golden rice in today's lecture. I will be back soon with another science and tech validation series. I hope this lecture was useful in some sort of a way for brushing up your facts regarding the various GM crops. Thank you very much.